welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm Gary Blanchard, uh, the host of the show. And today my guest is Reggie Demon, who is a uh, director yes. of a play that's going to be at uh, Workshop 13. Yeah. Reggie, welcome. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. So uh, this play is called Welcome Home. Mm -hmm. And this is a very special project. Tell it me, is. Tell me about the show. So um, the show is based off of the stories of four real veterans. Um, so these are four real people who have given their accounts um, about their experience in um, active combat um, and active duty um, in, in different wars. There's, there's four um, veterans. And so two are from uh, Vietnam, one is from Iraq, and the other is from the Iraq time and served stateside. Um, and they all have these different experiences that they um, shared with uh, a, a local author called J.S. Hobbs, and he made a short story out of their okay. accounts. And um, from there, it was such a nice um, compilation of storytelling and you know, it was, it was such a, it felt like such an important thing to share with people that um, uh, Beverly, who works with the uh, Brookfield Institute right here and where, um, decided to make it a, a play. And so uh, Sam Farnsworth actually turned it, he's a, a playwright, and he turned it into a script for, okay. for a play. <clears throat> so this began life as uh, basically people's memories yes. and experiences yes. became a fictionalized story and has now become a play. Correct. So yes. how did you get involved with the project? Um, well, I saw that community, uh, Where Community Theater was advertising for a director, and I had worked with Where Community Theater um, on a few projects um, as an actor. I was in um, their production of High School Musical a few years ago. Okay. Um, I also did um, Murder at the Rutherford House, which was a, a dinner theater okay. uh, project. And I, I've just, I've known about them for a while, I've worked with them, and I... I saw the, that they needed a director, and, and I figured this would be a really good time for me to kind of jump into that. Um, I, I have a, a little bit of free time over the fall, so <laughs> I figured a better way to fill my spare time than um, doing something I love, which is theater and directing. Okay, and is this your first time directing? And this is my first time directing a, a stage play. Um, so I have directed other projects before, um, mainly the Massachusetts Renaissance Fair. I work with their theater department. Okay. Um, and uh, I've done a couple smaller side interactive theater projects as well. Uh, so this is my first foray in, in uh, uh, scripted stage show, and I'm very excited. That's great. That's great. So this is uh, obviously some very powerful mm. uh stuff in this play, did it present any special challenges in trying to put this on? Yeah, well, I mean, it's continuing challenges. Um, I think the biggest challenge was in, in casting. Um, you know, this, is, this isn't a script that's um, made, of, made up of fictional characters. You know, this isn't a story that just kind of popped it into someone's head and right. they put it on paper to you know, entertain the masses. Um, this is the story of four real people. And so I think that the, the biggest challenge in casting was finding people who could, um, actors rather, who could connect to the material and actually um, portray a real person and, and, and almost speak on a behalf of a person who wants to share their story but can't do it themselves. Okay. Um, so we, uh, we had a few rounds of auditions to make sure we found the, the right people for these parts, and I ended up with four amazing, amazing actors um, who just took to the script, um, really got into the mindsets of the characters, and, and we've been doing some work on, you know, uh, exhibiting a lot of emotions and really kind of stripping, uh, stripping them down bare emotionally to uh, get across what's going on mentally in in these people's minds. Okay, so uh, for people who might want to come to this mm. this play, yeah. uh, what should they expect in terms of the emotional impact? 
I mean, it's um, it, it's adult themes um, for sure. It's going to be a very intense play because these are again we have to you have to think about as we go through this. These these stories really happen to somebody, and and these are all um, people from the community who have gone through war, whether it was you know um, working as a um, air you know traffic controller or on the combat field in Vietnam. They all have different experiences, but all very real and equally traumatic. Right, um, right. And you know, so we do deal with adult themes, um, PTSD being the main um, theme across the board right. in different forms. And um, it, it, it can be, there can be some triggers there if, if you have experienced that in your own life. Um, but I think that the main takeaway from this is that for veterans specifically, you know, anybody who's not around uh, military members, whether active or retired, um, don't realize that the war for them doesn't ever stop. You know, we, we think right. of it as they're, they're done with their, their duty, their home, everything's over and everything's fine. We don't think about the fact that they actually have a war in their head for the rest of their lives. Sure, sure. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense because we don't always stop to think yeah. that what we're asking of soldiers is something that is not normal. Right. And, you know, I, I think it's wonderful that we are starting to pay attention yes. to the toll that it, that it can take. Absolutely. Uh, so what was the casting process like? Well, um, we had, uh, so we had, um, the script was still in kind of a draft form. Okay. Um, because some changes were made to the setting and to some of the dialogue. And so we, I, I took parts of the script that really made sense for actors to read out loud um, to see how they were able to connect with that particular person. Um, I don't like to call them characters because they're not, you know, they're, right, right. they're real people. Um, and so each of them had a, a monologue, like each, each of these people in, in this play have a pretty hefty monologue describing their experiences and you know trauma and so I, I kind of picked out the the most harrowing pieces that I could find because I wanted to see like how deep they could go into those um, you know into that well of, of emotion as a as their own person therefore they would actually be bringing it out on behalf of that other person whose story they're telling um, right. you know okay. so we we did that and, and each actor was also um, asked to share a very deep um, emotional story that um, might have either been traumatizing or consistently um, gives them uh, you know recurring emotion of some kind right, right. Um, <laughs> excuse me and they they all did that wonderfully they were all very brave in their presentation. They had no fear as far as kind of letting that emotion come out. Um, one of the actors is actually a veteran himself okay. from Vietnam. Okay, I, I was going to, to ask if any of them had any, yeah. any uh, experience as veterans, so yeah. Yeah, um, the, the actor who is playing Tom, I mean, there isn't really a main character, but Tom happens mm -hmm. to be the kind of the driving force of the show. I mean, he bookends the show, if you will. Um, but Harry is, is uh, Harry Pearson is the actor who plays Tom. And he is a veteran who was in Vietnam. And so, you know, as we're going through the script, <laughs> he would be like, he, he would have no side, like, just, I just need to let you know that it was really like that, you know? And, and he'll talk about things that happened to him. And, um, <laughs> He will, he will constantly say he was one of the lucky ones, you know, he's here with us and he is in um, good condition physically on the exterior. Right. Um, but you can tell, like, he's, he's seen some things and, and I, think, I think that's what a lot of people don't know about these veterans and their stories is everything seems okay on the exterior, but there's a lot boiling underneath the surface. Yeah, and, and from what I understand, it's things that it's very difficult for the person to talk about mm -hmm. because we civilians don't have the ability to really fully understand, I think, what folks went through. Right. Uh, so it, it sounds like the, the play is uh, 
very informative mm -hmm. for the audience. Yes, very And much. Uh, perhaps cathartic for our society because mm -hmm. we need to talk about these things. Yeah. And we still tend not to. Absolutely. We will talk in general about uh, PTSD mm -hmm. and about the high rate of suicide, but we don't like to make it personal. Right. And I think it's so important to make it personal, to realize these are people mm -hmm. with stories and feelings and families. And it sounds like this yeah. really brings that out. Absolutely. And, you know, I think if there's one thing, if there's one goal that I hope we accomplish, um, that I think we all hope we accomplish with this play is, you know, to help somebody reach out to, to somebody who might be dealing with PS, uh, PTSD, um, you know, because it is hard to know when somebody's dealing with that. And it's even hard to help them through that. So, so I, I think we all hope with the presentation of this material that somebody might understand a little bit better how to help somebody who's going through these issues. Yeah, and it's, it sounds like maybe particularly for family members of people who have served, mm -hmm. this might give them some insight yes. and see, you know, some things that maybe their family member hasn't really been able to, to share with them. Yes. So. Yeah, because it's, you know, and, and you'll, you'll see that too when we uh, present the play on stage is, um, Veterans typically, or military typically, have an easier time talking with each other about these things because they can empathize. They know exactly what the the language means. Um, they know ex they can kind of put themselves in that place right, um, right. when the when each other you know share those stories. And so, and I think that's kind of one of the the most important things as far as dealing with PTSD for veterans is is group support because you you have to have um, you have to have a, a support system there that can really truly understand and, and empathize and listen. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the, the whole theme, like the whole overarching theme is, you know, how to deal with these systems with uh, the, the people around you. Right. Um, you know, we talk about, at the beginning of the play, we talk about a Project New Hope, which is uh, essentially that. It's a program that helps... Um, veterans learn how to utilize group support and, and that kind of therapy to deal with PTSD. Right. And uh, I know that the Brookfield Institute is, is doing a lot of things here and where at the uh, E to E, uh, Holyoke Community College oh, yeah. uh, building uh, for veterans. And I really would encourage people to check out uh, the website for the Brookfield Institute, uh, which is... Uh, it says Brookfield, but it is based here and where. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the work they're doing with veterans is really amazing. Yeah. And I think bringing in the arts mm -hmm. to tell the story yeah. is, is a very uh, interesting way of getting people to think about these things. We should talk about when and where. Oh, yeah, I guess that's important. Well, the where is where. Um, <laughs> so um, the, the, the show's going to go up on Veterans Day weekend. You know, very okay. fitting. Um, we, you know, we want the, time, the timing to be very poignant. So it's going to go up Veterans Day weekend, November 10th at 7.30 p.m. and November 11th at 4 p.m. And it's going to be in where at the Workshop 13. Okay. And I, I think it's excellent, too, to help people to realize that Veterans Day is more than a reason to have a Monday off oh, from yeah. work and to, to have sales. Right. Oh, gosh, yeah. <clears throat> and that it really is to uh, recognize the people, some who gave their physical lives and others who have given their emotional lives. Mm -hmm for this country. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's that's wonderful. Uh, so when, you know, uh, we, we've talked about your being a director mm -hmm. and a lot of us hear that word. Uh, 
And I, I've had a little bit of experience with theater, mm -hmm. but uh, for a lot of people, they would like to know, what does a director do? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so a director in theater, so um, typically you've got a, a set of producers who who start the process and bring the show to life. You know, they, they have a budget and they, they hire, you know, pretty much everybody um, as far as like crew and at, at least at the, the top level. So the producers hired me um, and the executive producer is Beverly who um, is the director at the Brookfield Institute. So um, then, then a director is hired who pretty much takes over <laughs> okay. um, and takes a script, everything starts with the script, um, of course, um, and takes a script and, and goes through and kind of visualizes what, um, what she, he, she, whoever is directing wants wants it to to be essentially in order to pour, portray the story in a way that the audience will connect with, and, and it's different for every director, um, and it's also different depending on the actors that you have. But um, uh, you'll you'll pick it apart and you'll decide what kind of scenes you want for, um, sorry, what kind of sets you want for each scene. Um, you know, you'll work with a, a set designer to to put that together. Um, you'll work with a if you have a, a big enough production, you'll have a, like a props department um, to, to make the specific props that you want. Um, and again, depending on the size of the, the production, you might have a hair and makeup department um, and a costume department to, to kind of help put the characters together. Um, and, and that all runs through the director um, based on this uh, umbrella if you will, of, of the vision that the director wants to put together. Um, and then when we get into the, the actual, um, you know, acting, um, the director hires the actors, of course. Um, and sometimes the producers are involved with that, depending on the size of the production. Um, but mostly that'll, that'll happen through the director. Um, we'll hire actors and um, that's when the fun stuff begins, uh, in okay. my opinion, um, because then, then we're working on building and developing characters, um, breaking down, um, you know, like the, the emotions and the, and the raw, um, uh, emotion, well, the, the emotions that the characters are going through throughout this right. entire show. Right, right. Um, and so we'll, we'll work with the, the actors on that. Um, we'll go through blocking, and blocking is... Um, You'll go through each scene and you'll pretty much tell the actors where you want them to go. Okay. You, you end up here, but I want you over here at this line, um, which is also very important because blocking, um, you know, you want to make sure the audience is with you and that their eye is going where you want it to go and that they're right. engaged the whole time. Right. Um, you know, and your blocking needs to accentuate the, the dialogue. Okay. So, um, yeah, and then the show goes up, and it's pretty much it is handed over to the actors, and they they make magic on stage. Okay. <laughs> now, workshop thirteen uh, does not have a uh, curtain. No. Or anything like that. What what challenges is that? For um, kind of having that bare, you know, that open yeah. stage. Well, I for this particular script. It works perfectly um, because I I actually want it to feel like an intimate setting, like the audience is there with these veterans, um, you know, talking to them in their circle, like a big group support setting. Um, even though we still have what's called a fourth wall in theater, which right. means the actors aren't <laughs> actually um, engaging directly with the audience. Right. You know, there's they pretend that there is a fourth wall there and there is no audience. Um, so even though we do have a fourth wall in this show, I, I still want the audience to feel like they're right there, you know, talking and listening to these real people while they tell their stories. Um, and so not having that curtain there actually makes that easier. Um, so I, we, we had a production meeting and, you know, I, I talked to the, um, the crew about how the, you know, I wanted the set design, I wanted it to feel like a very outdoorsy, picnic-y, uh, campground kind of feel, and then I wanted to extend that actually out into the audience, so we're going to have some, um, we're actually going to make the audience seating feel like a, 
like a picnic area. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and then that way, you know, the, the actors can kind of go right on stage. At the end, they'll just come right out, and we can do like a little meet and greet. Um, but I think it works really well. And with this play in particular, we don't have any set changes. Okay, so that, that makes it easier. Yeah, we don't have to cut for any scenes. We don't have to do a blackout or, you know, lights out. There's no intermission, so we don't need the curtain. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and for people who... Uh, Unfortunately, now we all have so so busy a, a life. Yeah. Uh, what in, what what time frame uh, is this play? How long does it does it run? Well, um, it it's not going to have an intermission. Um, mm -hmm. So it's we're. And I, I say it like this because the, we're still tweaking a little bit sure. as we go. Yeah. But we're trying to uh, get it to an hour and a half okay. uh, with no intermission, So right. it's just, it, which isn't bad. I mean, you sit through no. a movie for longer oh, than that. Oh, you know? people, people sit through movies for three <laughs> for hours. Like three, yeah, twice that long. <laughs> um, and the cool thing about it is there will be um, food and beverages served at Workshop 13, so you can go early and you know, just have a drink and sit down and, and chat and enjoy the atmosphere. Um, and the same at the end of the show as well, if, if you're so inclined. Yeah, it's, it's really a, a, a wonderful venue, and I'm so glad to see yeah. them, them branching into the theater like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what you have been involved with the Renaissance yeah. Festival. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm originally from Baltimore. Okay. And there's a big one down there. Uh, yeah, there's a huge one. Yeah. Uh, down in Crownsville. Uh, so what 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 is it like, kind of putting together a presentation for the Renaissance Festival? Um, that's a, it, it's a very different challenge than than you know, what you would put together for a stage, um, because they're like I tell the actors at the Massachusetts Renaissance Fair, is not only do we not have a fourth wall. In this show, there are no walls. It's just, um, it's very, it's um, what you would call immersive theater. So, like the, the audience is, is part of the play. Um, so, as a lot of what we focus on for that is actually interacting and improvisation. Um, you know, and and these actors will actually build, help build their own characters with specific guidelines. Um, so it's a lot more freedom for the actors, um, if that's kind of what they like doing. Um, and, and some actors do latch on a little tighter <laughs> to improv and unscripted shows, and some are the other, yeah. other way. And they're both equally, um, equally difficult forms of artistry and acting, but right, right. equally entertaining. Uh, my, my experience with, with Renaissance festivals is that the people who attend them are really into it. Yes. So uh, I, I imagine, yeah. uh, you know, casting actors for it. Yeah. Uh, you probably have people who, uh, you know, live that part. Yeah. <laughs> rather well. Absolutely. Yeah, and and that's actually one of the things that um, that makes it both easy and difficult to cast those kinds of um, events is because once you find the people who really like doing that kind of um, acting, it's just like it's it's really easy to cast them and put them in a role and give them direction. Um, but it's also hard to find a lot of people, you know, <laughs> in right. general, who do like acting, who specifically like to do the, the improv. Um, and interacting um, immersive theater. If you are, are there people who sort of do the circuit? Um, the the run their circuit. Run, yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually. So in our cast, um, we have at least a handful. So we, we typically I think we had twelve actors this past year, and. Oh gosh, at least five of them do other run fairs as well. Um, okay. So the Connecticut Renaissance Fair um, is fairly close, and then Mutton and Mead happens in Montague, Mass. And so we, you know, actors who are really into this right. form of, of um, performing will do multiple run, okay. run fairs. Yeah. So is there a question that I did not ask that you wish I would have? Um, no, I think. Um, 
I, you, this was a really great and thorough interview. I, I was <laughs> well, like, like really you. pleased. Yeah, this is the first time I've been on the show, and I'm, I'm very happy. You know, we want to get the word out um, about this play. Um, I think if if there's any if there's like one last tidbit I'd like to leave the, <laughs> the okay. viewers with is to, you know, spread the word. And and this is a really important show with really important content. Um, and we want to do justice to the stories of these real people. Right. So um, definitely spread the word. <laughs> okay, so remember the play is called Welcome Home, and it will be uh, presented at Workshop 13 here in Ware on Veterans Day weekend on Saturday evening and Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon. Correct. Mm -hmm. And please, please be there and support our veterans and support these actors who are working to support our veterans. Yes. Reggie, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. And again, uh, we'll see you next time on Creative Connections.